What does it take to bring 198 countries together to actually agree on something? It turns out, a giant hole in the sky. Welcome to Win Wins of History, a series of uplifting stories of when humanity managed to overcome the odds to come together to solve a big problem. The year is 1974 and two scientists make a terrifying discovery. The chlorine being released in CFC gases, used in fridges and spray cans and so on, are breaking down the Earth's ozone layer. Which is really bad because the ozone layer is essentially Earth's sunscreen. Without it, not only would we get more skin cancer, but also many of our crops would die, as would the ocean plankton which produce most of our oxygen. And when the scientists tried to raise the alarm about this, the companies producing all these CFCs of course went into denial mode. DuPont even went as far as calling it utter nonsense and a science fiction tale. Hmm, where have we heard this story before? And honestly, they nearly got away with it. Until another bunch of scientists discovered something too big to ignore. A huge hole in the ozone above Antarctica. The obviousness of the problem also made it harder for the DuPont lobbyists to get away with paying off the politicians to ignore the problem. And once they realized a ban was likely around the corner, they started investing into research into eco-friendly CFC alternatives. And luckily for us, they found one, which meant that the company pivoted from opposing a ban on CFCs into supporting one because they had found a new revenue stream. And so the Montreal Protocol was born, a treaty that banned ozone-destroying chemicals. And most of the rich nations signed onto it pretty quickly. But there was still another sort of incentive barrier that needed to be passed, how to get the poorer nations to sign on too. But here's a really clever part. The treaty designers told the rich countries to pay the poorer countries to switch to the safer chemicals. But the treaty designers also included some negative incentives too. If you didn't join, you couldn't trade CFCs with any member country. You also wouldn't get access to all the alternative fancy new products that were arriving on the market too. And these guys had no time for cheating either, because their monitoring was serious. International teams of scientists could easily detect CFC spikes from space. Like, for example, they spotted some sneaky CFC production in China in 2018. The global pressure was so intense, China quickly backed down. So yeah, all these factors together meant that the treaty was an enormous success, with almost every single country on Earth joining in. And now, 40 years later, the ozone layer is well on the way to healing. Because that's really the key to solving big global problems. You can't just shout about it. You also have to design the right incentives. Want to hear more stories like these? I'm Liv Barry, a game theory and risk expert and I'm making a series on how we can solve human coordination problems like these.